let's look at a proof of the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem states, let f be a function such that 1, f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and 2, f is differentiable on the open interval from a to b. Then there is a number c in the open interval from a to b such that the derivative at c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which is the slope of the secant line that joins a and b. Or equivalently, if we clear to fractions, f of b minus f of a equals the derivative at c multiplied by b minus a. So let's go ahead and make our interval from a to b. And we need a continuous differentiable function there. So we'll just go ahead and put some point a, f of a, and some point b, f of b, and some continuous differentiable function on that interval. Now we want to look at the secant line that joins up those two endpoints of the interval, and we want to be able to express that. Well, I always go back to point-slope formula from algebra. y minus the y from the point equals the slope times x minus the x from the point. So we could write that as y minus f of a equals the slope, which is f of b minus f of a over b minus a times x minus the x from that first point, which is a. We could take this and we could solve this for y, and that would be an expression of this line or this function. So we're going to have that y equals f of a plus f of b minus f of a over b minus a times x minus a. Now this upper one, we're just going to call it f of x. So we have two functions here, and we're actually going to create a new function now, and that new function is going to be h of x, and what that function is going to be is the difference between these two functions. So if we took this upper function minus the lower function, we'd be left with this distance here. And you can see that it's going to vary depending on where you would be. But if we're at a or if we're at b, that distance is going to be 0 because those functions equal each other there. So if I write this down, this is going to be f of x, the upper function, minus the line. Well, this was the line, so I'll just distribute the negative to each piece, and that's going to be f of a minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a times x minus a. So here is our new function h of x. It turns out that Rolle's theorem will apply to h of x, but let's verify that. There were three conditions for Rolle's theorem. The first condition for Rolle's theorem was that we need to have a continuous function on the closed interval from a to b. Well, given as part of our hypothesis for our mean value theorem, f of x was a continuous function on the closed interval from a to b, and that's involved in h. And then the other part of h was subtracting a linear function, and a linear function is continuous from a to b, since it's continuous everywhere. And so the sum or difference of continuous functions is also continuous. Therefore, h of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b. We meet the first condition for Rolle's theorem. Second condition for Rolle's theorem was that the function needed to be differentiable on the open interval from a to b. Well, our assumption in our hypothesis for the mean value theorem was f of x is differentiable on the open interval from a to b. And we know a linear function is differentiable. And so if we had the difference between these two differentiable functions, it's also differentiable. And in fact, we could express its derivative. Let's do that. The derivative is going to be f prime of x and then this f of a is just the y value at a, so that's a constant, so its derivative is 0. If we distributed this to both of these, the second one of these is just a constant, so that one's derivative is 0. And the derivative of negative f of b over f of a over b minus a times x is just the minus f of b minus f of a 
over b minus a. So here's an expression for the derivative of that function. Now the third condition to apply Rolle's theorem said that f of a had to equal f of b. Actually in this case the function is h, so h of a has to equal h of b. Well, what is h when we're at a? Because these functions equal each other, their difference is 0, and so we know h of a equals 0, and that also equals h of b because the difference between the two functions at b is also 0. We meet the three conditions for Rolle's theorem, so we can apply it to this function h of x. Does Rolle's theorem say when we meet its conditions? It says there exists a c on the open interval from a to b such that the derivative of the function at c equals 0. Well, the derivative at the function of c is right here, so let's express that with c in it. That's f prime of c minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Since this is true, we could move this to the other side, and we basically have f prime c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which is the conclusion of the mean value theorem.